I'm Leon A. Noble, and I'm the director of 10 Seconds. I'm Miriam Gonzalez, and I'm the playwright. I'm Darius Johnson, and I play one of the characters in the play named Ray, who is kind of like the voice of reason for um, representing Black Lives Matter. 10 Seconds by Miriam Gonzalez is a interactive play that takes you inside of the true stories of in Washington, D.C. and their interactions with police officers in the community. I hope that they walk away with new insight as to how these young men and women feel when they are um, profiled by police officers or when they have these interactions. I think this is a unique opportunity to really hear and, and witness the thoughts that are going through these people in, inside, within. People entering and exiting our lives, like the cops, good apples and bad apples, they're everywhere, like a lot, like all over. But, hey, I mean, that's why we all get to talk, right? If the cops stop you, watch yourself. Keep your mouth shut and stay calm. And, and smile. Make sure you smile. Keep your hands where they can see them. And, above all, do not run. Y'all are always thinking that we're the problem up to no good, crazy. You know, we walk out of our house in the morning and we carry a fear with us. And it's always there, deep inside, just simmering around us. We can't go nowhere in this safe, in this city safely. I walk out that door and I'm scared. There were so many places that we belong out here. And if I'm scared or I'm mad, you see, dangerous. You see, wild. All because of how we dress, because of how we look. We're here to serve and protect. Trust us. Really? We can't just be who we are. At the core, this play is interactive. And I think that I hope people walk away with wanting to have more of a discussion and coming up with more action-driven uh, <laughs> discussion so that it's not just about having the discussion about it, but what can actually happen to stop these incidents from occurring so frequently. The, the play ends with uh, a request to the audience and the goal is to activate the audience to end the play, to come up with an ending. And um, my hope is that um, that, that offers this, uh, the, uh, the audience, which I hope involves police and youth in the audience, to have a real uh, dialogue. But I think given the tragic events of the summer and where we are right now, that it's a prime opportunity to, to, to not just have a dialogue, like you said, Leonay, but to really come away with more questions, with um, an action plan. The audience gets a chance to see inside of a young Black man's life or a young Black woman, a young Black person's life, and see that, um, that they are not acting violent because they are doing this act or that they are a bad person or that there is something negative, but that they're dealing with the most human, um, the, the, the most human issue that we all go through, with, which is emotions. And 
um, within this play, we have a character who comes from a broken home. To offer this moment to, uh, to take a breath and to have some compassion and some understanding um, and not to make these new knee jerk reactions and profiling and it's very easy to do, which, which stems from, you know, deep systemic racism. But to be able to be in a theatrical setting and to see this raw portrayal of what it looks like, what it feels like to have Black actors on stage and discuss this to an audience, I think is so visceral and I think is so real for an audience to take in. Um, yeah, I just think that's a very fortunate experience. I am personally having a lot of experiences with uh, friends, uh, colleagues, coworkers outside of the Black community that are wondering how, how to be an ally and trying to learn that navigation system. Um, and so I, I love that we have theater because I think that theater is always the perfect is to start. Unfortunately, with the pandemic, we don't have a lot of theater, but in general, theater is always a great place to start because it opens the first conversation. It will provide insight into what the young Black youth um, goes through and what they feel and their emotions, and it will bring their stories to light, um, as well as some 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 perspectives from officers that were working with them. Um, you know, it's not very often where you see in certain communities where you have officers that come together with the youth where they aren't just doing activities together, but they're actually listening to each other and hearing what this person feels when they walk outside and see them. Yeah, it's so about uh, connection and being able to see inside the other, so to have a chance to see inside the other. If we can find common ground, find a way to connect, and maybe, just maybe, even though in some way we're all a little broken with a little compassion, maybe it's not as hard as we think to feel, to change, to write a new, a better one, or new beginning. how we end our days. Who has the power to make the change? Yeah. We're asking you. You decide. Scene seven. Is it the end? Or is it the beginning? <laughs>